Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you yet again another Comic Book Hollywood video segment right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Comic Book Hollywood movie review. And this week, you all voted for it. I'm here to bring you my review of the DC animated film, Superman Batman Apocalypse. So, uh, I will be referencing the official Wikipedia page for Superman Batman Apocalypse. And I'm going to give you all a brief little run through of that, um, of what, of, of the film. So, let's get into the review. Now, Superman Batman Apocalypse is a 2010 direct-to-video animated film based on the Superman Batman comic book storyline, The Supergirl from Krypton, and is a sequel to Superman Batman Public Enemies, though I don't know how it's a sequel. Uh, the art style is parsh, partly based on that of Michael Turner, who penciled the Superman Batman comic book art. The film is the ninth in the DC Universe animated original movies line, released by Warner Premiere and Warner Brothers Animation, and the first sequel in its line, though once again, I don't see how it's a sequel. It was released on September 28, 2010. The, star, the film stars Tim Daly as Clark Kent Superman, Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne Batman, uh, Andre Bogger as Darkseid, uh, Summer uh, Susan Eisenberg as Princess Diana slash Wonder Woman, so many other people. Okay, despite the title, the film focuses primarily on the introduction of Supergirl and her relationship with Superman, Batman plays only a supporting role which is my biggest criticism about this film but I will get into that as I get on into the review so a brief synopsis of what the film is about as I've stated Superman Batman Apocalypse uh, which quite honestly should be called Superman Batman the 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 legend of Supergirl because the film centers around uh, Kara, Kara L, who you all know as Supergirl, uh, Superman's, technically she's his older cousin. Um, I, yeah, isn't she like, six, she's like, she's like, I think 15 or 16 years older than Superman, but of course you all know the storyline. She was, um, she was uh, frozen in suspended animation and she arrived on Earth uh, as a teenager only to find her cousin, Kal-El, a Superman, fully grown and, you know, taking up this mantle of being, you know, the great protector of Metropolis. So the film centers around Supergirl's arrival on Earth, her, uh, I guess you can say her reconnecting with Kal-El, even though uh, the last time she saw him, he was a baby, and kind of her getting used to life on Earth and just coming to, coming to grips, grips with everything that has occurred, everything that she's missed. I mean, she's been, uh, she's been in suspended animation for what, 20 some odd years. And, you know, uh, she's still, she's still dealing with the destruction of Krypton. She's still dealing with um, uh, being on Earth and adjusting to Earth living because as you all know, she has the same powers that Superman does. And so Superman, who is now, you know, an adult and, you know, he's now a superhero, he's learned to control his powers. He's learned how to live among mankind and Supergirl hasn't. So he's teaching her that, but also, you know, they're kind of reconnecting because they're blood. And for all intents and purposes, this is the only other re relative that Superman knows exists. Uh, this is because this is before Barrel and his wife, because Superman doesn't know about them yet. Um, but also, what's happening at the same time is you have Batman, who is highly suspicious of her, and sees Supergirl as a potential threat. Batman sees Supergirl as kind of the same way he saw Superman first time he met him. Because she is a being that has all this power, and he doesn't know what she's capable of. He doesn't know where her mind is. He doesn't know what her motives and her intentions are. But the thing that makes it, the, the thing that makes like such conflict is the fact that she can't control her powers. At least with Superman, Batman can kind of take his word for it because he knows that Superman is struggling to keep his powers in check. Supergirl, she can't. And it's not that she doesn't want to, but she doesn't know how yet. She has to be taught, she has to be trained to. 
Wonder Woman kind of takes the same approach because she looks at Supergirl as a potential threat, yet she is more willing to help Supergirl out because she knows the position that she's in. But while all of this is going on, we have Darkseid, the main villain of this story. We have him and, of course, Granny Goodness and, uh, and her female uh, warriors, her female minions. Darkseid wants Supergirl. Um, Darkseid wants Supergirl to fulfill the role. I forget what the specific role is, but pretty much she wants Supergirl to kind of be like the leader of his army, if you will. Um, the... The female warriors that Granny Goodness has, uh, she's been prepping them, she's been training them to take up that mantle of like uh, dark side second hand, if you will. And none of them have been really been able to fulfill that role to his liking. And so when he discovers that there is a young female version of Superman, a young female Kryptonian on Earth, uh, that does need guidance, that is still very naive and, and still very... Uh, very innocent in a sense to the the evils of the world and of the universe dark side sees that as his opportunity to seize uh supergirl and to brainwash her and use her as his emissary of darkness on earth and so that's where uh the major i guess you can say the kind of like the secondary um I guess you can call it the secondary conflict because me personally, I feel like the main conflict is about Supergirl and her relationships with the Justice League members. But that is also the conflict that keeps the ball rolling, that sends the events of the plot into motion. Um, Superman having to confront Darkseid to save his cousin. Um, okay, so that, I mean, that's pretty much the story, the story uh, in a nutshell. Now, uh, let, let's, let's talk about the writing, let's talk about the dialogue, let, since we're still on the story. Now, the writers for this film are uh, actually uh, Tap Murphy, who I believe is the gentleman that wrote uh, Batman Year One. And he did, yeah, actually he, he is, because I remember writing his name when I did my review of that for KillerFilm.com. Um, he did a good job with this film. Um, now, I'm not too familiar with the storyline in the comics, and I, I guess you can say that this is actually the first comic book Hollywood uh, review that I'm doing where I'm not very familiar with the source material. I mean, I know the story of Supergirl, but this specific storyline I'm not too familiar with. But I think he did a good job with it because everything that we need to know is in the film. You, you follow what I'm saying? It may not exactly follow the storyline to the T, but the meat is there. The, the meat and potatoes are in the movie. Everything we need is right there presented for us. So kudos to Tap Murphy for, for a great job in doing that. Also, the dialogue. I will say, uh, granted, I am doing this review based off of memory because I, I didn't rewatch this movie to review it. Um, but I have seen this movie a couple of times. The dialogue, for the most part, I thought, uh, I thought was good. I did, I, I did kind of wish uh, Supergirl's dialogue was was a bit stronger, but keep in mind, Supergirl is still in that naive, uh, childlike phase, so her dialogue wouldn't be as strong as, say, Batman's. The character, I think, though, had the best dialogue, or the characters I thought had the best dialogue. I will say, Darkseid had some pretty damn good dialogue. Uh, Batman typically has good dialogue. But I really liked Wonder Woman's dialogue. I thought she had the best. I thought she had among the best lines in the film. They were really good. So let's get into the voice acting, which I am so fucking stoked. I was so stoked when I found out about this film um, back in 2010 because all of the original cast are back, especially Tim Daly. Tim Daly is the voice actor of Superman on the animated series. However, he does not do the voice for Superman in Justice League or Justice League Unlimited. He does the voice acting for uh, Superman. Prior to this, he did Superman the Animated Series, uh, The New Adventures of Batman and Superman, the Batman Superman movie, which was a, a made-for-TV movie, and he did uh, Superman Batman Public Enemies, which was the film that was released right before this. But here's my thing. I had, I had not seen Tim Daly as Superman in so long um, 
before Batman Superman Public Enemies that when he came back for that film and for this one, I was so fucking stoked. I was I was amped up. I was like, yes, Tim Daly's back. And I also think he's returning for uh, Justice League Doom, which will be released on uh, February 28th, which I, I've, I've kind of already reserved that week to review that film. Um, I'm, I'm also in the process of getting things together where I can review that for KillerFilm.com. Uh, I'm really stoked for that movie. But but uh, give me a minute. I just want to make sure about that because I think he is doing the voice of Superman in Justice League Doom. Yeah, he is. He is. Yes, he's doing the voice for him in Justice League Doom. So I'm really stoked up. I'm really stoked about that. But yeah, you know Tim Daly from Superman the Animated Series. So I'm glad they were able to bring him back for this film. Uh, of course, Kevin Conroy. He is Batman. We all know Kevin Conroy is Batman. Uh, and then Susan Eisenberg, Wonder Woman. Uh, she, she does Wonder Woman, I believe. She didn't do Wonder Woman for the animated movie, but she does do Wonder Woman for uh, for Justice League. So I was really happy to have her back um, as Wonder Woman. And uh, and then of course, you know, the other voice actors for the most part did pretty well. The only voice actor I had a problem with in this film was. Um, yeah, Andre, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Breuer? Breuer? How do you pronounce that? Uh, oh, I know who that is. Oh, shit, really? That's him? Huh. I really, you know, it's so funny. I should know his name because I really do like this actor. Um, I really do like this actor. But yeah, he does the voice for Darkseid, and you know what, now it really is disappointing, because I like this actor's work, his, his, his live action work, but as Darkseid, I felt like the performance was lacking, like, I mean, if any, I mean, if any of you all who have seen Darkseid on Superman the Animated Series, or you've seen him on Justice League, you know that the voice actor who originally did Darkseid, which I believe was uh, Michael Ironside, he did Dark Side to a T. I mean, he was Dark Side. I mean, he he did a damn good job as Dark Side. It, 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 you you all will remember I said multiple times a good voice actor is someone who can bring life into the two dimensional character. And he did it time and time again, man. I mean, he was Dark Side. So when Dark Side, you know, when they when they got a new voice for the film, you know, I, I immediately, you know, that was the first thing that caught my attention, but. Compared to that, I mean, on his own merit, it's it's a decent it's a decent portrayal. It's not bad. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. His his performance of Dark Side was not bad at all. But compared to previous versions, it, it just really left you uh, wanting. So, but that but that's that's the only voice acting complaint I actually have in the film. Most most of the voice acting is done particularly well. Uh, so so let's talk about uh, let's talk about the uh, the animation the animation was good I mean th this is typically what I think about when I talk about you know the standard of DC animation this is what I'm talking about uh, me personally I felt like this was a massive um, uh, improvement over Superman Batman Public Enemies which to me was too stylized I mean not that the animation was particularly bad but it was just way too stylized and it kind of turned me off because it was like, like it kind of. I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not gonna get into that because that's addressing the animation of that film, and I'm supposed to be talking about the animation for this film. But Superman Public Enemies, like I said, the animation was overly stylized, and so with this one, I felt like they redeemed themselves. The animation in this is beautiful. It's crisp. It's so fucking clean. And I mean, the the action scenes, God. The fight between Superman and Supergirl on Apocalypse, beautiful, beautifully done. And oh my god, my favorite scene in the whole film, the fight with Superman and Supergirl versus Darkseid at the Kent farm. God, that scene was done so fucking well. You all can you look it up on YouTube. Uh, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse, uh, I guess you can say, I guess you can just type in Doomsday Fight or uh, Kent farm fight. But man, the animation on that was fucking spot on. I, I, I loved every fucking frame of that. It was great. So, um, 
let's see, uh, the music. Now, I can't remember the music that well. Uh, maybe because it didn't, maybe because it didn't stick with me, but, uh, I like the music. I thought it was done pretty well. Um, and then, of course, this is directed by Lauren Montgomery, which she did a damn good job with it, you know? Uh, and then, of course, produced by Bruce Tim, Alan uh, Burnett, Lauren Montgomery, Sam Register. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys, I mean, the cast and crew on this thing was legit. So, all in all, I mean, it was a pretty damn good film. I'm trying to see what else am I missing uh, that I usually discuss in the reviews. I, I think that's it for the most part. I mean, pacing, the story is paced beautifully, you know. Uh, every scene has a purpose and everything just rolls on like that. Uh, so yeah, all in all, it was a great film. Now, the only thing, before I get into my rating, I'm going to say like, as I mentioned, my biggest problem with the film was the advertising for it. This film has false advertising. The film is called Superman Batman Apocalypse. Now, if you were to hear that title, what would you think the movie was about? I'll let you know what I thought it was about. Apocalypse, the end of the world. Um, and then, of course, Apocalypse, the planet in which uh, Darkseid is the ruler of. So I'm thinking it's going to be this grand um, film about some type of conflict that, in, that in, involves Superman, Batman, and Darkseid. And that's not what the film's about. The film is about Supergirl. She is the main character of the film. It is her story. Why? Matter of fact, if you go back and you look up the commercials, I think Supergirl is only in one fucking scene and she's dressed in her apocalypse outfit. She isn't even dressed as Supergirl. You wouldn't even know it was her from the commercial. Horrible fucking advertising on DC's part. They really did do false advertising for this. And that's the thing that pissed me off the most. Because if they would have just been legit about what the fucking movie was about, I would have went and got it anyway. I would have went and picked it up anyway. Come on, fucking DC. Have more faith in your fan base, man. So that's my biggest fucking problem. It should, the, the film should be entitled Superman, Batman, The Legend of Supergirl, or The Tale of Supergirl, or The Quest for Supergirl. Or something like that, or um, or hell, I would I would probably me personally I would probably title it um, Superman Batman the Fight for Supergirl, or uh, or Superman Batman uh, Supergirl's Awakening, or some shit like that. But uh, but nah, that fucking title and the commercials just huge, huge fucking false advertising on DC's part. Uh, just horrible. Just fucking horrible. Uh, but the film in itself, pretty damn good. And I, I, I would go ahead and consider this among the best of the DC animated films with the fucking advertisement bullshit aside. So, uh... Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, my final rating on this film, I will go ahead, uh, I'd give it a four out of five stars. Um, I, I highly recommend it if you all haven't checked it out yet. It's pretty damn good. Me personally, I think it's, uh, I think it's one of the best Supergirl storylines, um, that's ever been adapted in animation. I mean, uh, shit, I would put this right up there with the, uh, the, the Supergirl storyline from, uh, Justice League. So, uh, yeah, pretty damn good. Four out of five stars. It gets my official OAW stamp of approval. And I am on 20 minutes now for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap this up. I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. And in the comments below, leave suggestions for next week's comic book Hollywood review. And also, thumb up any suggestion that you see that, uh, that you like. So with that said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Command-in-Chief, signing off. And until next time, peace.